Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Glow Kids Ministry. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys today, and I wish everybody is well, safe. I miss all of you. So before we get started, let's begin with a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all the amazing things that you give us. Thank you, Lord, for the health. Thank you, Lord, for every one of the kids and their families. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you give us every day, for this amazing day, for the sun, for the moon, for the universe, for everything, God. Thank you. There's nothing else I can ask you for that to keep us all safe, to love us unconditionally like you always do, and to protect us for anything. This is in your name. We love you, God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now we are going to continue and we're going to be doing a worship. Ready? Here it goes. a really powerful really really powerful um, worship okay let's continue over here so today we're going to be um, learning and our lesson it's called the cup of God's wrath okay cup of God's wrath after completing this lesson 
we will be challenged to live sacrificially by demonstrating Jesus' love to those around us. Wow, that's really powerful. <laughs> okay, so like I always do, we're going to begin with a memory verse. This memory verse says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, for rigorousness, for the ulterioriness, to bring you to God, he has put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. This is 1 Peter 3.18. Wow, that's really, really amazing. So the Garden of the Jensen's Main, located across from the Kingdom Valley, was a grove of olive trees where Jesus often met with his disciples. The world's Jesus name originates from the Hebrew term meaning olive press. This location is also known as the Mount of Olives. Okay, so today we're going to be reading and we're going to go into a little bit deeper um, in the story. And we're going to be reading Luke, Luke 22 from 39 to 46. Luke 32, 22 from 39 to 46. Okay, and it says like this, Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, kneeled down and prayed, Father, if you are willing to take this cup from me, Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and straightened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more. Earsly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you asleep? Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you not fall into temptation. Wow, this is really, really powerful. It's, he knew that the place that they were going to could actually be a place where they were going to have temptations. Do you know what temptations are? Temptation is what you can feel before you can commit a sin. So for example, if you go to a place and somebody is stealing uh, something that you really like, a candy that you really, really like, and you say, wow, I really, really like that candy, but I don't have money to buy it. And your friend is stealing it taking it, how will you feel? Is that temptation? Because you can actually say, I really want to eat the candy and he's taking it. But at the same time, you know for sure that it's wrong. You can't steal, right? So that's a temptation, a point where you feel maybe the desire of doing something when you're knowing it's not okay or it's wrong. Okay, so when God was with his disciples going um, to this garden and to this area, he knew him or the disciples can actually fall into temptation. And he was scared. He was asking God to help them out, right? So Jesus is saying, God, help me. I don't want this to happen, and I know it can, right? So the disciples were sleeping. So he tells them, like, hey, wake up. Let's, let's start praying. We can't allow sin and temptation to come to us. So we need to stop this from happening, right? So if, if you were to think, 
How often did Jesus and his disciples go to the Mount of Olives, which is also known as the Garden of Jesim? They went quite often. As the scripture tells us, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. This is what it says in Luke 22 that we just read, right? Why was this time different? Right? He was feeling, he felt, he knew that he had to pray because he knew something was about to happen, right? And it says here, what did Jesus tell his disciples to do? He said, hey, wake up, let's pray. No time to lose. We have to pray. We have to stop and avoid anything that can be wrong to stop from happening, right? What was Jesus' prayer? He asked if his father was willing to take the cup from him. Nevertheless, Jesus did not want his own will, but rather his father's will to be done. So he was saying, Father, I don't want to do what I want. I want to follow what you say. And that's actually what we should say every day. We should sometimes stop and say, hold it. I don't think this is right. I think I should follow what God is still telling me to do, right? And sometimes we're like so focused on what we want and not what he wants us to do, right? So it's really important to understand that even Jesus followed the father's saying, imagine us. You know, so it's, we always have to remember that doesn't matter what happens, we still have to say and pray to the Lord to guide us and to make us follow his will and whatever he wants for us, okay? So who or what strained Jesus during this time? was an angel from heaven, right? An angel from heaven told him, it's okay. It will be okay, right? What description tells you that Jesus was greatly distressed? He was sweating and his sweat was like drops of blood. He was more than distressed, I will say, right? He was a little stressed, right? He, he knew something was wrong, right? Why was Jesus in so much anguish? Why was he, how, why was he this way, right? He would suffer many things and then he would be crucified as a sacrifice because of the sins of the world. So he knew that after this happened, he knew it was his time to sacrifice his life for us. So he was praying and asking the Lord to help him continue with this that he had, right? So he was a man still, but he came here to sacrifice for us. And he was asking the Lord to guide him and to help them go through that. Wow. It's like sometimes we think and say that something is difficult. Like, can you imagine giving your life for people that you don't even know or people that you didn't even knew they were going to come in that time? So that's how powerful Jesus is. He was following God at no cost. He gave his life for us. And God gave us his only son for us. This is beyond words, beyond expression. It's, it's extraordinary because it's so hard just to think how. How can that happen? If you think with, a, with a, another way, right? There's no way to understand it. But when you have faith, and when you believe 
what God has for us and how has he been with us and for us. It's extraordinary. It's just amazing. Praise the Lord. So have you ever suffered for the sake of others? Do you ever sacrifice your time, talents, treasures, or something for others? Something that we should think about. Because he didn't sacrifice only his time. He sacrificed his love, his only son for us to cover our sins, to make us have a better life, a better way of thinking, a better way of loving, a better way of everything. So it's our turn to sacrifice and exchange for that, right? It's our time to understand that there's nothing small or nothing big for him. Everything should be for him. Everything. There's no doubt. So if God was able to give us his only son and sacrifice him for us, what should we do? It's like, <laughs> we have to give him our life as well. There's nothing else to do. It's our life and do with me whatever you want, Lord. Thank you for having me here. That's what we can say. And do with me whatever you need me to do. And sorry for all the things that I've maybe been doing wrong or have done wrong, right? And, and try to be that little light in maybe the life of our friends, teachers, our neighbors, even with a smile. Maybe we can start growing those little seeds in each and one of those people so everybody can understand that the Lord is our Savior and that he has done everything for us, okay? So this was really, really powerful. So Jesus... Love us, love is so great that he was willing to suffer many hardships, even death on our behalf to save us from God's rigorous wrath. We should be ever thankful for the incomprehensible gift of grace, which Jesus provides for us, and that we will be forgiven for all our sins. We are able to spend eternity with him in heaven. We should sacrifice, share this good news with everybody and others. So thank you guys for being here. I hope to see you guys again next Sunday. Many, many blessings. Be safe. Have a fantastic rest of the day. I love you all. And see you soon.